Do we have a severe challenge facing us from a religious totalitarian view that has come to be called radical Islam? They being Islam's own Puritan element. Yes, we do. Is the solution what has been chosen? The United States that has not yet lost its own puritanical revolutionary fervor. It freed the slaves, fights racism, sexism, homophobism, indeed now hateism, etc., etc. There will always be a new ism to fight. That revolution in permanence. And now radical Islam through its export of democracy. We shall see. But indeed I ask you to consider that today those who have taken Lincoln global by unleashing a war against Iraq and all the rest to follow, which will be unending and deadly because it seeks un uh, unobtainable goals against an enemy that will not do as the Christian Robert E. Lee did in 1865, isn't the wrong path. We've actually seen this all before. In the years prior to 1860, this country was told that the survival of the United States and the continuance of free government depended on the crushing of the South. Today we're told such depends on crushing certain Middle Eastern governments. A Southern soldier, when asked why he was fighting in the 1860s, said, because you're here. One of our SCV brothers named Pat Buchanan has likewise said that Islam is an increased threat here because we're over there. I would caution that Islam has the same religious not secular thing to say in return to this Jacobin assault. The world should be Muslim and we have the right to slaughter to accomplish that vision. That clash is about to bring the world to its next round of catastrophe. We're either going to get these matters straight in our minds and get the sand out of our eyes of which Genovese spoke thrown in them now for over a century, or we're going to face an apocalypse that will make World War II seem small in comparison. We therefore owe a duty to our ancestors and those to follow us. I would encourage this body to devote itself to getting it educated on this clash of worldviews. If we want an end to this kind of insanity, we've got to rescue our country from over a century of Jacobin-based radicalism, which affects race relations in this country, worst of all. To effect that rescue, we've got to re-educate our, re ourselves again about our history and purpose. So I challenge you to educate yourselves through reading the founding documents of our cultural and political history, and at the same time helping to grow this organization so others can learn the truth of these earth-rending matters. However, imperfectly and slowly, folks are becoming aware of the fact that something, they're not quite sure what, is wrong. It seems to me that our job is to explain what is wrong, and we can do that simply by keeping alive the memory of our Confederate ancestors and learning ourselves and teaching what they believed, as opposed to this modern madness. As Christ said long ago, we are not what we eat, which is the stance of the materials, be they of the rational or naturalist romantic sort, but what we believe. In light of that, the counter to this falsity is to tell the truth about our history. However much may be uncomfortable for some, because time after time, compromise on these issues has only resulted in a new round of commemoration such folk find offensive. There is not a historical marker, statue, or other celebration of our past that can withstand the onslaught demanded by the leftist logic. Let me close with the final quote of Jefferson Davis years after the world-shaping events of the 1860s. Quote, Our cause was so just, so sacred, that had I known all that has come to pass, had I known all that was to be inflicted upon me, all that my country was to suffer, all that our posterity was to endure, I would do it all over again. Let the rising generation learn what their fathers did and let them learn the still better lesson to emulate not only the deeds but the motives which prompted them. May God grant that sons ever greater than their fathers may rise whenever their country needs them to, to defend her cause. Nothing fills me with deeper sadness than to see a southern man apologizing for the defense we made of our inheritance and denying the great truths on which our institutions were founded. To deny the justice of their cause, to apologize for its defense, and denounce it as a dead issue is to take the last of their stakes, that for which they were willing to surrender the other." Close quote. I can't decide for you, but I intend to stand with Davis, who stood with Washington, Jefferson, 
and the founders on behalf of constitutional liberty, Burkean rather than Rousseauan in definition, and the sons of the Confederate veterans whose fathers also once stood with him. I would hope that one day all of the South people, black and white, rich and poor, good, bad, or ugly, can come to understand the need to stand with us as well. For that to happen, we can no longer be silent, complacent, or ignorant of the real issues.